Hello, this is Sculpt January number 25, and this time the category was Shell. I chose to do a dog, tortoise, beast type thing, and combined all sorts of creatures, cats, dogs, tortoises, and a pug. That's right, a pug for the face. I wanted it to look kind of cute and pet, but a uh, battle beast at the same time. So you can see I used the meta balls. I'm finding that quite a good way of starting a mesh. I prefer to start with quite a loose base mesh, especially as I've not really defined exactly what I'm going to sculpt yet, uh, but I know roughly the sort of beast that I want to create. I started off thinking that it was going to be a really big beast, but then I suddenly thought, actually, I like the idea of more sort of movement about the character or the monster. So you can see I spend a lot of time figuring that out. Of course I knew how to have a shell. So you can see that I go up and down in detail level. When I decide that I don't like the shape I go down in detail and move things around. It's much easier to move things around when you've got a lower detail setting on your dying topo. I'm still using the constant detail, I prefer that, I know how big my mesh is going to be and how many polys it will have. You can see I'm changing the back legs here to give it more of a crouched dog. Hopefully it's going to look kind of playful. see me changing my Wacom settings there slightly as well. It was strange, I suddenly lost some of the settings and had to quickly reset them. It's really useful if you have a tablet that has buttons on the side to get those set up with the key commands that you use often. I might do a tutorial on that, I think that would be useful. I've certainly found it really helpful. I'm using my Wacom Mobile Studio Pro Leica Cintiq, so I've plugged it into my main computer. But I'm still using the buttons more than my keyboard. And as I get used to them more and more, I hardly use the keyboard at all. One of the main keys that I have set up is the Alt F command, which kind of centers around where your brush is. That's really useful. So on my reference images, I had to get up quite a few different reference images for this, for uh, dog legs and cat legs when they're crouching. And I could have really done with better understanding of the topology. Because it took me a long time to get to where I did. I'm not sure it's quite correct really, but it's all about practice. I did lots of spikes like this and then decided against them. I thought it didn't really make sense actually to have a really spiky creature because the, the spikes kind of looked a bit flimsy really. And it doesn't really go with the shell so much. Uh, so I ended up changing it to sort of more tortoisey. And you can see me kind of deleting them with the snake hook tool. I brought the detail level down again for that and pulled them in. I wanted it to look kind of comical, of course, cute as well, but slightly real. And you can see that I'm just slowly upping the detail and then going around the mesh with that level of detail and refining and then upping the detail again. 
It took me a long time this one, this must have been about five hours. I had lots of fun, I was trying a couple of different things this time. Instead of going across to the multi-resolution modifier, I used the constant detail and did a detailed flood fill to give it about a million faces and then used the texture sculpting tools. And that was pretty successful. I also wanted to try out some painting because I'd found that when I'd used cycles for painting I was getting lots of problems. So I wanted to have a go at Blender for painting for a change. I hear that lots of people use it and that it's a better workflow than cycles. It just works a bit nicer. You can see your normal map a bit easier with GSL rendering. So I thought I'd try that out. I probably should have had in mind exactly what I was going to do before starting the sculpt because I changed my mind a few times throughout this one. It's still a lot of fun, really enjoying it. You can see I'm using the masking tool here. I find that quite useful now. I'm glad I've sort of got used to using that. And with many of these tools, it's just repetition and trying things over and over again. So you can see I got some anatomy of a cougar because it was available. And I tried to sort of copy the muscle structure a little bit. Uh, the legs of my creature are a lot bigger but it should still make sense. That's why I was saying in previous episodes about understanding of anatomy, the better your understanding is of different creatures and anatomy, the more it's gonna help you even when you're doing odd sort of creatures like this. And it's not really good enough, even though this is a fantasy creature and you'd think, oh well you can just pretend the muscles are there and there sort of thing. Uh, it doesn't really work like that because uh, muscles will follow a certain flow as of course they serve their purpose. So faking it, you still need to understand the basic structure. So this is where I started uh, looking at pug pictures. Of course the mouth isn't puggish. I wanted it to look smiley but scary. I probably should have put some teeth in there as well but I was really running out of time five hours in. And now I'm just refining the shape, trying to make him look a bit cuter. And this is where I did a detailed flood fill uh, for a high poly so I can get some texture brushes and have some fun with those. I'm kind of just experimenting with these really. I haven't used them for beasts that much. So uh, I had lots of reptilian skin ones and things like that so I thought I'd just plonk them around the place and see how it went. It went okay but I think I probably could have done better with more time and more practice. I'll go across to the Metcap here and back and forth just to see what it might look like under different lighting. And I'm just slowly refining the shape now. So of course I did a detailed flood fill but then I turned Dyn Topo off in order to use those textures. And now you can see I've done the baking process. I didn't want to show that because it was taking a long time.
and this is in the painting process. And I did a strange thing here, I thought the masking tool was going to work for me so I could paint the tooth, and then I really struggled to get rid of the mask and I couldn't see where to hide it. I'm not used to Blender Render for painting. So it took me a while to sort that out. I thought I'd leave that in, because then you could see uh, the mistakes I'm making. I eventually found that you could clear the mask and I was relieved at that point. And then I just basically go around with simple colours. I've still got my cavity bake and my ambient occlusion and they're going to give it its shape and its texture with the divots and creases and things like that and the highlights. So basically I'm just putting down a really base colour. And really I wanted to experiment to see how much of that I needed to do. I also came up with a slightly different workflow here as well, that I'd take it across into cycles, render it under the principal shader, see what it looked like, and go back to my save of painting in Blender Render. So I had two different versions of Blender that I was running. Because if you go backwards and forwards from cycles, it can be a bit confusing for Blender. So here you can see I'm hooking up my materials with my cavity and my ambient occlusion and then plugging those into the colour with mix RGBs with a multiply layer and an overlay layer. That might not make much sense, I will do a tutorial on that soon, but to those who sort of use Photoshop and things like that, that probably did make sense. I thought the shell wasn't colourful enough, so I thought I'd do some weird spots and blotches and things just to give them some character. I could have gone further with this, but I wasn't really sure how far to go. And you can see I'm getting little anomalies around the place where there's sort of um, glitches in the painting process. And I think that's because my topology is quite poor because I've just used the decimate. And Cycles was particularly bad when I was painting at that, so Blender Render did a better job. You can get rid of them by using the smear brush. So you just smear all over your problem areas and it smears it out and you can see that now I'm setting up the lighting just go for three colored lights and change them around as I see fit and very simple eyes with the reflection I copied the pug eyes again I probably should have done more there really And there it is, number 25, shell. It's probably more of a hide, to be fair, than a shell. But it was good fun, took far too long, uh, but I'm really enjoying it. Thanks again for all the feedback I'm getting from people. Really appreciated, and you've kept me going. And it looks like I may actually finish this. Maybe I'm speaking too soon, who knows. This one has put me behind slightly though. I was hoping to get ahead and maybe do a bit of tomorrow's as well, as I've got a full day teaching and it's Dragon as well, so I'm really looking forward to that. So links in the description, uh, get along to Sculpt January. There's some fantastic work on there, and I'll see you there.